Notebook LM was already one of my favorite AI tools that I recommend to everyone, but with the most recent update, they added some new features that make it even more powerful. So I'll cover the two big obvious ones they added, which are amazing, but also some of the smaller, less obvious features they incorporated, plus a few pro tips that aren't new, but are overlooked. I'll start by creating a new notebook, which will let me demonstrate one of the new features right away, and it'll get us set up to explore the other really cool ones. Now, if you haven't used Notebook LM before, it's a free tool from Google where you create notebooks that pull together sources across any file type, PDFs, websites, videos, all of it. When you ask questions, it grounds its answers in those specific sources, which massively reduces hallucinations. It's the best way to organize your learning and knowledge and actually trust what the AI tells you, if you set it up right. Pro tip on that in a minute. I want to create a notebook about the path to AGI. Now, normally I'd upload my own sources, but sometimes you won't have enough. So I'll show you how Notebook LM can help you find them. And the first way, which was already here, is this fast research option. You just type in your topic and submit, and it will research and find usually around 10 good sources on the topic. These look good. You just click import and it will bring them directly into your notebook. That's great and can be a big help, especially to supplement sources you already have. But the new option is source discovery using deep research. This is actually the same deep research tool that's available in Gemini, but they've integrated it directly into Notebook LM. It's an agentic tool that autonomously researches your topic, analyzes what it finds, then adapts its search strategy to fill in the gaps and give you a comprehensive research report. What makes this integration so useful is that it doesn't just give you the research report like it does in Gemini. It also pulls in all the sources it used as notebook sources. This time it discovered 52 sources and also has this entire research report that utilized those sources. And so out of those 52, it selected the top 20 sources and I can import those. And sometimes there will be issues with sources where it's behind a paywall like these ones. There is this nice little quality of life upgrade where you can just remove all failed sources at once. You used to have to do that one by one. Now I have that full research research report, as well as the top 20 sources it found. And of course you can review and deselect any sources you don't find relevant. So that's how they've integrated deep research seamlessly. They've also integrated Nano Banana Pro in some really powerful ways. I'll show you those in just a minute, but first here's a pro tip now that we have some sources. Whenever I create a notebook for research or learning, I ask one or more of these questions depending on the topic. And first here's the thinking behind all these. Notebook LM is great at processing large amounts of data and sticking to your sources. It reduces hallucinations way better than a typical chat model, but that's only as good as your sources. Like what if your sources are incomplete, biased, or missing key perspectives? These questions help you identify those blind spots. And I have three questions I rotate through depending on the topic. You could use them all in one prompt, but I usually use them separately. One is identify any areas my sources disagree on and any contradictions between them. In this case, since this is about AI alignment and safety, there's going to be a lot of disagreement in the sources. So this is a super helpful prompt to be able to read through and understand those different perspectives. And that prompt is even more helpful if you're researching something that's a lot more fact-based than this. You can pinpoint those disagreements and try to resolve those or find where you might have a bad source. And number two is identify gaps in my sources. What's missing that would be necessary to understand the topic fully. This is another nice little quality of life thing. It has this thinking area right here showing you what it's doing as it's answering your query. So now it will show any of the gaps in my sources so I can research those further and find any new sources I want to include. Or maybe it identifies the general gaps in knowledge on that given topic. And the third question is, are there any contrarian, alternative, or lesser known viewpoints that are not covered in these sources? Typically when you find these sources, you get most of the well-known viewpoints. Like this covers all the major debates around AGI, but usually these research models won't find the alternative or lesser known viewpoints. The consensus is not always right. I like to dig a little deeper. All these answers are super interesting, but pretty long. So I'm not gonna dive into those right now. Definitely an awesome topic to have a notebook on in here. I already do have a separate one, but super interesting. And again, I won't use all three of those prompts in every notebook. Depending on the topic, some will apply more than others. But either way, they help Notebook LM tell you exactly what's missing, which sources you could remove, modify, or add to your notebook. This helps you build a more complete and balanced view of your topic. Now I'll come back to a few more chat upgrades in a minute. Now that we've validated our sources, let's create some content. This panel on the right, the studio panel, has all the different formats to help you view, understand, and retain the information from your notebook. The formats that were already here before are audio overview, where it generates a realistic sounding AI podcast based on your sources, a video overview, the mind map, reports, flashcards, and quiz. Then these two at the bottom are the new options. They both utilize Nano Banana Pro, infographic and slide deck. And pro tip for most of these, don't just click on them. 
that will automatically start generating using the default settings. Instead, click the edit button first to customize them. Usually they have a few simple preset choices to choose from, as well as an input box for your customization. And with these Nano Banana Pro features especially, the customization makes a huge difference. Starting with Infographic, which has been one of the most mind-blowing features of Nano Banana Pro to me. I covered infographics in my Nano Banana video, but they've implemented them natively here with their own prompt engineering on the back end. And first off with any of these, you can check or uncheck which sources you want to use. Next, you choose the orientation, landscape, portrait, or square then the level of detail, concise, standard, and detailed. You can also describe the infographic you want to create to guide the style, color, or focus. I'll generate in concise, standard, and detailed so you can see what they each look like. And these take about one to two minutes to generate. What comes back is just incredible. This was the standard option, and there is just so much information on here. It would have helped to narrow down the sources. They had to sift through a ton of stuff to come up with what to put on here, but it did an insanely good job. I like this three key alignment strategies graphic in particular down here. This is really good. Also, the race for AGI is well designed. I don't see any issues at all as far as misspellings or unreadable text. Actually, never mind. I just saw one right here. There's two eyes where it should be unlike, it says unike. That's the only one I spot. But there's one more issue up here. With this graphic, it shows predicted as early as 2026 all the way on the right, but over here predicted 2027 to 2030. So that should probably be further to the right. But little issues like that would be very easy to clean up manually. And the fact that I went with such a dense topic is why it crammed so much information onto one page. It is actually insane it was able to do it this well. Uh, if we check out the simple one, it'll tend to get everything perfectly accurate with the simple option. And with a quick scan, it does look like everything is right here. Again, even this is something that would have been impossible just a year ago. I'll also check out the detailed version. And this is a very aesthetic design. It just looks awesome. I'm going to guess that if I look really closely, I'll find some more errors here. Um, and yep, I'm definitely seeing some just minor issues as I go through. I'm not gonna sit and go through and point all of them out. But like just in this first sentence, it says it can match or surpass human capabilities across virtually all cognitive tasks. Like there's definitely misspellings throughout this. So with this tool, if you have an ultra dense topic like this and go with the detailed version, you'll probably get some errors. But I typically won't need something as detailed as this anyway. The standard or simple ones are the ones I would choose even if I didn't have issues with this. So I think that feature is just amazing. I've been using it a lot in Nano Banana Pro within Gemini, but it's super nice to have built into all my notebooks that I already have here. So I'm covering all of the new awesome features and some of the old ones, but if you want to learn how to actually use Notebook LM for faster research, I highly suggest you check out this free guide provided by HubSpot. It's called the Marketer's Guide to Google Gemini and Notebook LM. This is a really practical guide that shows you how to use both Gemini and Notebook LM together to streamline your entire content workflow. It goes beyond just the basics. It covers real marketing use cases like competitive analysis, SEO content briefs, and repurposing content across different formats. Inside, you'll find step-by-step -step workflows with actual prompts you can use, like how to turn a single piece of content into multiple formats using Notebook LM's analysis plus Gemini's generation capabilities. And my favorite part is the real world marketing scenarios. They walk through exactly how to use these tools for things like creating content calendars, analyzing customer feedback, and even generating social media posts. Like it's super actionable. Again, completely free to download using the link in the description. Thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video and providing valuable resources like this one. Now the other new option here is slide deck. We have two options, the detailed deck, so a comprehensive deck with full text and details, perfect for emailing or reading on its own, or presenter slides, clean visual slides with key talking points to support you while you speak. I'm gonna go with that one just so it generates a little quicker. You can choose the length, short or default. Again, I'll choose short. Then I can describe the slide deck I want to create. So these can be things like the outline or the audience and focus. I'm just gonna leave that blank and let it generate on its own. Starting off here, this is a pretty sleek design. The AGI paradox, we are building something we can't consistently define, reliably measure, or safely control. Solid first slide. I'll just jump through these. They all look well designed. Pretty nice graphic for the widening alignment gap. This is a nice one for the different approaches in the race to control a fractured landscape. And that was just the simple version, but those all are very well designed. 
say equal to or better than some of the other tools where this is their entire platform. That's a really nice feature to have. I'm gonna generate the detailed deck and come back to it in a minute. That one takes a little bit. And while that's generating, I just wanna mention that there's way more use cases for infographics and slide decks. I'll show just a couple that I've seen Notebook LM post and some people from the comments. So one with infographics was uploading your resume slash LinkedIn and creating a custom visual representation of your career. So this was their social media managers. I thought that was a super fun idea and it turned out great. And since this one's not super complex like the ones I showed, I actually don't see a single spelling error on this whole thing. This is someone else using that same idea, adding a few more sources than just their LinkedIn though. And another example, and I really like that. I don't really use LinkedIn, so I can't really try it for myself, but it's a cool idea. Another person tried it with a hand-drawn style. I really love this, and you could use whatever style relates to your career. So it'd be even more customized to you beyond just the information. Or here's another one. Not sure what they added to the prompt to make it look this cool, but that is awesome. And someone in the comments posted this one. I really like this. It's called the Mass Glitch Protocol. She commented saying that the goal was a visual tool for students to use independently when they get stuck, encouraging self-regulation before asking the teacher. She did comment with a little more information on how she created it, but really this looks just awesome. Can even do something like the anatomy of an authentic Greek salad like this one. Now this looks like a detailed one about Bitcoin, the genesis, mechanics, market metrics, and ecosystem. Here's a super detailed infographic about AlphaFold. I do imagine if we look through this, we'll find some small issues issues in the text, just like we did with mine. But these diagrams all look incredible. And this person was using it as an alternative to the mind maps feature they already have. It's definitely a more aesthetic type of mind map. And I've seen quite a few people using different languages as they create these. And they also had some ideas for what you can do with slide decks. They have four different use cases you can try out for yourself. And I like these ideas. So one is using sources to create a storybook instead of a traditional slide deck, or doing the deep research report to simplified slides. That's kind of like the example I used, or you could just upload super messy notes and it will turn them into organized thoughts or ugly slide to pretty slides. So yeah, just a couple more ideas there. I'm sure anyone will be able to think of a lot more that apply to them specifically. Like in the comments on this one, it's truly incredible. My ability to pump out lore to my homebrew D&D site has just grown exponentially. Definitely a unique use case I wouldn't have thought of. So hopefully that's a few more ideas to get you going on what is possible with this that will at least spark something that you can use in your own life. There's one more way they've integrated Nano Banana Pro. This one's a major upgrade to an existing feature, Video Overview. This was here before and it creates a narrated explainer video on your topic, but they improved this massively with the update by adding custom visual styles powered by Nano Banana Pro. And you have some options to customize. The explainer, a structured comprehensive overview that connects the dots within your sources, or brief, just a bite-sized overview to help you quickly grasp the core ideas from your sources. And they have choose a visual style, an auto select, where they have this big style list with a bunch of interesting styles, or you can do custom and create your own. So how about I try retro 80s computer interface with neon grids, wireframe graphics, and cyberpunk aesthetics. That should look pretty cool. You can also choose what the AI host should focus on. Again, I'm just leaving this blank. Normally you would wanna guide this to what you're trying to learn. That one also takes a while to generate. So I'll show you what this looks like once it's finished. But while it's working, we'll switch gears here and jump into the chat feature with a small but much needed improvement. Your chats are now automatically saved when you leave. Before you had to click save to note or your chat would disappear when you left. And I lost many conversations by accidentally navigating away. But if you want to delete them and start fresh, you can come up here and use delete chat history. So that is a very convenient upgrade and you still have those options to save your chat as a note. Or once you've saved it, you can convert it into a source. And that's great if the conversation itself becomes reference material you want to query against later. Now, here's a feature that's been here for a while, but I think many people overlook. Back in the top right, there's these configured notebook options. This is where you can customize how your notebook responds to help you achieve different goals, whether that's to do research, to help learn, show various perspectives, or to converse in a particular style and tone. So first is define your conversational goal, style, or role. There's a default which is best for general purpose research and brainstorming tasks, the learning guide for educational content, helping you grasp new concepts and skills efficiently, or custom. This is for everything else. I use Notebook LM for a lot of things beyond just learning and research. So this is where you can really tailor it to your specific needs. Everything from an encyclopedia of my user manuals and guides from all my tech products and household equipment, up to things like a 
travel planner, or competitor research, or a hook database for YouTube videos, or I have one where I save all my previous YouTube scripts, or kind of like a book club for books I finished reading. I have a big list of other things I use it for. So this is where you can really tailor it to your specific needs. And you also have response length options, default, longer, or shorter. And just adjust this based on your notebook. So these are very important settings to adjust based on each notebook. And you set them once and every chat uses those preferences in the future. Now that detailed slide deck is done. Let's take a look at that. So this is much more thorough. There's a ton of text on each of these slides I'm just skimming through these they seem very well done and accurate even this is a like a pretty complex graph and at first glance all of these look like they're in the right spots right like the 0.58 is right up against the 0.6 like a reasonable slope to get down to 0.5 here these 0.16s are both roughly in the same spot 0.27 seems pretty accurate also i'm not going to read through all this to make sure it's 100 accurate but even just at a quick glance it's actually just insane it could create this again something absolutely impossible not too long ago so again i'm not going to go through every single one of these slides i'll just click through each of them so you can see there's a total of 15 here and I have not spotted a single misspelling. Every graph or image seems like it's accurate. Really, there is no other tool that comes anywhere even close to being able to do something like this right now, to be able to like actually generate each of these images from scratch and illustrate each of these concepts so well. This one is actually mind blowing to me and it's, you know, impressive it can do that, but this is actually genuinely useful to help you understand topics. So yeah, I love this. We'll definitely be using this feature in most of my notebooks. And it looks like the video overview is done as well. Today, we're decoding artificial general intelligence, or AGI. Let's get right into it. And the stakes? Well, they're huge. Just listen to what AI pioneer Judea Pearl said. I'm going to pause it. We've got a pretty realistic sounding voice. It seems like it's going to present pretty well. And just stopping on this first slide, like this is a great aesthetic, exactly how I'd asked. This is just awesome. So what are we actually talking about when we say artificial general intelligence? Basically, it's AI that's as smart as a human, the full range of our intelligence. But here's the thing. Nobody can agree on what that actually means. So far, this is super well done. That's a great narrator. Each of these slides have perfectly followed the style I wanted and are you know, pretty creative and good at illustrating the concepts. Although I did just notice one issue. He said the turning test instead of the Turing test. So researchers are saying the old tests, like the Turing test, just aren't cutting it. But other than that, it's been perfect so far. If you've been using Notebook LM for a while and had tested this feature before, this is miles beyond where it was in the past. But I don't know that this is a feature I'll regularly use myself that often. Um, it's just not the way I prefer to learn. But it is insane. It can create something like this, though, and some people probably will really like it. You could even use something like HeyGen to add a realistic avatar so it looks like someone is actually presenting it to a camera. There's probably already a bunch of people doing exactly that and posting it on YouTube. But that is everything new in Notebook LM. These are some extremely useful upgrades to an already powerful tool. Those combined with all of the existing features are why this remains one of my favorite AI tools that I genuinely regularly share with people I know and talk about a lot on this channel. And if you want to go much deeper into learning AI, we have a full course platform on Futurepedia. We have over a thousand lessons across over 30 AI courses. You'll find full learning paths on everything from ChatGPT to video generation to coding with AI and everything in between including a lot of the tools in the Google ecosystem like Notebook LM. And that's all included in one subscription. You can get a seven day free trial using the link in the description. Or I left this on the best for viewer setting. So YouTube really thinks you'll like watching this video next.